Hello and welcome to another SATS revision video. In this video we're going to look at the CGP Set B Grammar and Punctuation 3 test. As usual, if you've got this book, go away and do this test now. Give yourself no more than 10 minutes. Once you've done that, come back, have a look at the answers and see if you got the marks or not. If you haven't got these books yet, they're really, really good at helping you improve for the SATs. I've put a link to them in the description. They're very cheap and very, very useful. So if you think you need a bit of help with this, have a look at those and see if they might be worth investing in. Okay, number one, tick the suffix below that could be added to all of these words. A suffix goes at the end of the word, so we need to pick one that works for all three. The correct answer for this one is al. If you put it on the end of all these words, emotional, fictional, accidental, all of those are real words. Number two, each of the sentences below is missing a verb. Draw a line to match each sentence with the most likely verb. So all we've got to do is insert this verb into the sentence and see which ones make sense. The first one is this one here. I'll go to the cinema today. Yesterday, it's in the past tense, I went to the cinema. I'm going to the cinema tomorrow, that all makes sense. That's the correct answer. Number three, read the sentence below. Circle the most suitable pronoun to complete the sentence. This is a possessive pronoun, so who does the pencil case belong to? That's not your pencil case, it's mine. So this is the correct answer here. Number four, which sentence must end in a question mark? So obviously we're looking for a question here. I have no idea which holiday is the cheapest. That's not a question. She asked him what the time was. Again, it's just a statement. Which jumper are you going to wear today? That is the question. It's got a question word at the beginning there. Number five, read the sentence below. Insert inverted commas in the correct places so that the sentences are punctuated correctly. So we've got a split speech here. So we have, what were you thinking? Asked the chef, and then he's gonna carry on. You can't make meringue with lavender. That doesn't sound very nice. So we need to basically get the speech in there and get it correctly. So what were you thinking? We always put our inverted commas after the punctuation. Ask the chef, full stop, and we're going again. You can't make meringue with lavender. Close punctuation marks. Number six, the sentence below is missing a dash. Tick one box to show where the dash should go. So what I tend to do if we're looking for a dash is I look at the spaces and think where would the suitable pause go? So if we read it and stop at each box, it would be pretty obvious where that dash should go usually. So Sarah looked at me. She could tell I wasn't joking. That bit definitely doesn't make sense. Sarah looked at me. She could tell I wasn't joking. That definitely sounds right. Uh, so that's where I would put the dash. That's the best top tip I can give you. If you're going to look for dashes and hyphens, Pause each time and see whereabouts it makes sense. Number seven, tick the sentence below that uses determiners correctly. Usually determiners uh, tell us how many there are. There might be an a or a the, so we can see which one's been used correctly. We saw a elephant, that's not right, it's two vowels. There was a incredibly loud, again, that's not right. Lewis found a famous painting last week. That one could work. Let's just check the last one. Captain Redbeard has an gigantic ship. Yes, that's definitely not right. So it's this one here. Lewis found a famous painting last week. Number eight, read the sentence below. Circle the most suitable option to complete the sentence so it uses the subjunctive mood. They always throw a question in like this in the SATS papers and it's always, if I were this or if I were you, I would do something. So let's have a look here. If I were a bit taller, that's always the way it is, I could reach the top shelf. So it's not if I was, it's always if I were. Number nine, tick two boxes to show which of the words in the sentence below are relative pronouns. Okay, relative pronouns, they do tend to begin with a W, that's a little hint for you, but we can also look at the other words that are uh, ticked and see whether or not they are actually pronouns at all. So if we look at dark, for example, dark is an adjective, that's not a pronoun. Directly is an adverb as well, so that doesn't work. So it has to be these two, but I do know these because I remember that most relative pronouns start with a W, so which and who. They do always follow commas as well, so that is a good trick to remember. Number 10, read the sentence below. Tick the pair of pronouns which best complete the sentence. So again, we just need to insert these in here and see which ones make sense. They have to come in pairs, remember. 
So looking at the first one, Philip asked me where me, that can't make sense. Philip asked me where they could park, but them didn't know, no, that doesn't work. I reckon it's this one. Philip asked me where he could park, but I didn't know either. That's the one that makes the most sense. Okay, last question. Write your own sentence using the word drive as a verb. So remember, a verb is an action word, it's a doing word, so we're doing something, we're driving. What are we going to drive? So my sentence is going to be, I drive my car. It does say use correct punctuation, so make sure you put a full stop and a capital letter. You don't need to be really clever. A simple sentence will do just fine. So the second part of number 11, write your own sentence using the word drive as a noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing, or an object. So in this case, we could use it as somewhere where you might park your car. So instead of driving, I'm going to use the word park as a verb, and I'm going to write my sentence like this. I park my car on the drive. Okay, that's the end of that test. I hope you did really well. If you got some of the questions wrong, don't worry about that. This is what this video is about. It's finding areas where you can improve. Go away and practice those things that you've got wrong. If it's relative pronouns, go away and do a bit of research on relative pronouns. That's the only way you're going to improve. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. It does make a massive difference to me and these videos. Give it a thumbs up as well so that other people can find it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.